In this lecture, you'll learn about the bottom four OSI layers. Where network engineers are not typically very concerned with the top three layers, we are very concerned with the bottom four layers. This is really bread and butter stuff for us. Each of these bottom four layers are so important that they're going to have their own dedicated section later on in the course. Here, I'm going to focus on giving you the definitions which you're going to need to know for the exam. So the first of the bottom four layers, we'll start with layer four, which is the transport layer. The main characteristics of this layer are whether TCP or UDP transport is going to be used and the port number. Now, if you don't know anything about TCP or UDP or port numbers already, don't worry about it too much for now because we're going to be covering this in the dedicated section for layer four later. For now, you just need to know that if we want the communication between the two hosts to be reliable, then we'll use TCP. If speed is more important than reliability, like for voice or video traffic, then we'll use UDP instead. The other main characteristic at this layer is the port number. For example, port number 80 for HTTP web traffic, port number 25 for SMTP email. Now, there is quite a lot of other information also in the layer 4 header, but we'll talk about that when we get to that particular section in the course. The definition for layer 4, the transport layer defines services to segment transfer and reassemble the data for individual communications between the end devices. It breaks down large files into smaller segments that are less likely to incur transmission problems. The next layer is layer 3, the network layer. The most important information at the network layer is the source and destination IP address. Again, there's a lot of other information also carried in the layer three header, but we'll talk about that when we get to the later section. Routers are layer three devices. They operate at layer three of the OSI model. And the definition of the network layer, it provides connectivity and path selection between two host systems that may be located on geographically separated networks. The network layer is the layer that manages the connectivity of hosts by providing logical addressing. IP addressing is our logical addressing. Next layer is layer two, the data link layer. The most important information here is the source and destination layer two address. Again, just like with layer three and four, there is other information also included in the layer two header. For example, the source and destination MAC address if Ethernet is the layer two technology. Different layer two technologies use different formats for their addressing. For example, old legacy frame relay uses DLCI or Dulce numbers for the addressing. With Ethernet, which is what is always used on our local area networks, it's the MAC address that is used here and switches operate at layer two. Our switches are layer two aware devices. The definition for the data link layer, it defines how data is formatted for transmission and how access to the physical media is controlled. It also typically includes error detection and correction to ensure a reliable delivery of the data. And finally, we have layer one, the physical layer. This concerns literally the physical components of the network. For example, the actual physical cables being used. Definition of the physical layer, it enables bit transmission, the ones and O's between end devices. It defines specifications needed for activating, maintaining and deactivating the physical link between end devices. For example, voltage levels, physical data rates, maximum transmission distances and physical connectors, etc. Thanks for watching. If you want to get hands-on practice with Cisco Networks for free, then you can download my 400-page CCNA lab guide, which you can see above my head right now. 
Also check out the video about my CCNA course. It's the highest rated course online. Thanks.